Welcome back everyone. My name is Noah and this is Narrow Space. Today I am stoked to go back to space since my last few missions were on Kerbin. We all know how much Kerbals love space. So we'll be building an SSTO, flying it on a round trip to Minmus, and deploying a rover payload on the surface. I make videos like this as well as Kerbal recreations of real aerospace vehicles, so subscribe if you enjoy this style of content. Let's preface this video by explaining that an SSTO is a vehicle capable of reaching orbit in a single stage, without breaking into pieces like a normal rocket does. Do note, there's a million ways to achieve this goal, and it differs if you're playing KSP-1 or KSP-2. Uh, we will use two different engine types to perform this mission, one for atmosphere and one for space. In KSP-1, the engine types share the same fuel type, liquid fuel. KSP-2 has different fuel types for chemical engines, which is methane, and nuclear engines, which are more efficient but require hydrogen fuel. Today we'll use methane for atmospheric engines and hydrogen for our nuclear engines in space. The Rapier engine was the end-all be-all for SSTOs in KSP-1. They tank my performance too hard in KSP-2 for me to even get a feel for them, so I'll be using the Whiplash for atmospheric propulsion. You also have to build a bit larger in KSP-2 due to the new massive hydrogen tanks. We started with those large hydrogen tanks that aren't very dense, and the large nuclear engine that will burn their fuel. Next, we built parts for atmospheric flight around these, which is whiplash jet engines, their respective methane fuel, and wings. Of course, we'll need a crew cabin for, well, crew, and the minor details like struts, landing gear, etc. The astute among you may notice some helpful details that I forgot to add, which will come into play later. RCS thrusters, wink. This is my first SSTO video, partly because of the new design philosophy, but also the extreme bugginess with the current state of the game. The reason I haven't made an SSTO video yet is because I kept having this bug where I'd make it all the way to orbit and then my maneuver node just wouldn't work, no matter how much Delta V we had left. This game breaking bug was finally fixed in the last patch, and I can fly an SSTO to somewhere other than LKO. Over the past few months, I had a few promising designs and ideas for missions, but something, usually this bug, always stopped me. So you can imagine I was pretty pleased when the last patch finally fixed this broken maneuver node bug in Nelkeo. It still took me quite some time to have success. Trial and error, compounded by frustrating bugs that weren't necessarily design errors, made this simple mission not as simple. But it was still really fun and not too difficult at the end of the day. The more I thought about my current SSTO designs, the funnier I thought they were. Here's this massive nuclear-powered hydrogen rocket sandwiched in between two hypersonic airplane halves. That's literally all they are. And this is an effective approach, with reliably thousands of Delta V remaining once you reach LKO. Definitely a somewhat inefficient, big dumb rocket approach, but I think this is usually the funnest way to go anyway. But what a stark difference it is building and flying SSTOs in KSP-2. Sharing liquid fuel between nuclear and chemical engines in KSP-1 made designs much simpler. You could just slap tanks on your build, knowing they'll be useful later. Designated fuel types with differing densities definitely uh, mimics reality more. The caveat is that this makes SSTO builds in KSP-2 not only different, but more difficult, since they require more thoughtful designs. Theoretically, anyway. I'm aware you can still use one engine and one fuel type with the Rapier, which can work in space and the atmosphere, but as mentioned before, the Rapier performs so poorly on my honestly pretty powerful computer, so I really haven't been able to experiment with them much. But with these, you still only need one fuel type, and then just balance the oxidizer ratio, which eliminates the need for nuclear engines and different fuel types. But this is getting complicated, so I digress. Once we arrived, we began our descent. I realized that I completely forgot RCS. 
reaction wheels seem to be less effective in KSP2, especially at low speeds, so even with Minmus's low gravity, I struggled to maintain orientation. This made landing difficult and took a few tries. Once we got on the surface, our rover didn't give us any less trouble. Wheels, landing gear, and moving across the surface currently yield strange and interesting results, to say the least. I took a few test drives, and it definitely functioned as a rover, despite being difficult to control. I kept having to reload quicksave since the Kraken had its eyes on my space plane. After a few Kraken attacks that sent my craft flying into the air, I no longer felt safe on the surface. So we quickly boarded the space plane in what felt like an emergency evacuation from the surface of Minmus. Due to my poor planning and lack of RCS thrusters, Ascent also took a few tries before uh, finally leading to a successful orbit. We then planned our maneuver home as quickly as possible. The luxury of our overbuilt craft came into play many times during the mission. I was grateful to use and abuse all the extra Delta V packed into this thing. I intend to continue overbuilding craft like this until the game is more stable and playable. Since you can't share fuel anymore between nuclear and chemical engines, center of mass becomes a greater consideration in different phases of flight. Not to mention properly bringing enough of each fuel type to increase efficiency. What I mean by that is you don't want to run out of liquid methane before reaching a high enough altitude and speed, but you also don't want to bring a bunch of extra mass and fuel once you get to that point. Either way, I don't really care if it's more difficult, I absolutely love this change. KSP-1 SSTOs did and still do feel like magic spaceships that can perform supernatural things. For me, this makes KSP-2 much more immersive during the design phase and really every stage of flight. I feel like I'm doing something more difficult when I build and fly a single stage to orbit craft in this game which adds to the experience for me, but I recognize that as only my opinion and not fact. This feeling of difficulty could even be just the poor state of the game. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. There's also a few quick edits to my craft that I left out you might have noticed. I swapped the old front tires on the rover for some light landing gear since the Apollo style rover tires were too buggy. Additionally, I flipped the nose cone payload fairing around since I originally had it deploying downward. And I know I had an orbit lined up well enough to reach the KSC, but after trying a few times, I lazily diverted our landing approach to this beach next to this desert area here. Please criticize me for taking the easy way out in the comments. I'm joking, of course. But sorry, I was ready to call it a day. We flew all the way from Kerbin surface to Minmus and back, successfully deploying a rover along the way, despite dodging an emergency and evacuating safely. I'd call this endeavor a success. I look forward to when simple missions like this are simple to execute, but I'm still having a lot of fun during the early access journey. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video, because I had a great time making it. Like this video if you really enjoyed it, and subscribe for more uploads. Thanks so much for watching, and leave suggestions for future videos in the comments below.